welcome to the 2013 annual meeting that we have, um, the annual celebration. Uh, the idea of tonight's meeting is really to get to know each other, network, and perhaps you create a new friend, uh, uh, bring back the idea of what we do here tonight. At the same time, um, just create a safe space for everybody to feel comfortable. If they don't feel that at work, um, they can be themselves and they can just talk. So this is a very, very safe space for you guys. Um, my name is Melvin Rosado. I am the um, leader of the Employee Business Research Group for the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender. I've been doing this role for two years and December is my end of my tenure, but I will still be here a little bit longer for a couple more months until we find my replacement. So, welcome. Um, the program is going to go very quick. I'm just going to have a couple of um, presentations uh, to do and some of the awards and then we're over with that. So, with that said, um, I will recognize um, a couple of people that are here with us so you get to know who they are and what they really represent for us, the LGBT community at Merck. Um, first, I would like to bring over Dionysius Bausos right here. Dionysius, Dionysius has been our, our Business Inside Roundtable um, leader. Um, um, I've been working with Dionysius for two years. Um, I, I kind of like somebody said it today when we were having the meeting this afternoon that we are acting like we know each other for a very long time. Um, and it is. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> um, and it's because I think we have the same common cause for the company. So, Danis, if you want to just quick call. Um, it's, great. Uh, it's great to see um, a lot of familiar faces and a lot of new faces. Um, and I also, as some of you or many of you may know, as I'm leaving uh, Merck uh, at the end of January, so my tenure as um, uh, a part of this community is going to be uh, over uh, now-ish, this month, this month, next month. Um, but I want to, um, first of all, say that uh, it's wonderful that we're able to do this event every year because it really is one time during the year where we kind of all somehow come together. Um, and every year we want to work on making it bigger and better and bring more people in, do more planning and get more funding so that more and more people can come in. Because I think it is really critical that we have an opportunity to kind of drop what we're doing, at least for an evening, and kind of focus on us. And given the matrix, the matrix, matricity, I don't know if that's a word, but given the matrix nature of our organization and given how fragmented our locations are and, and how complex everything is, and sometimes you know, you're working and you're communicating with people that you have never seen. And so it's wonderful to have that opportunity. So um, I really am very, very uh, pleased to see all people here despite the weather. And I know the Christmas season is always in the holidays, it's always very difficult. So um, you're right, my, my work husband um, and I have had an amazing uh, relationship. He's the only person who can actually always find me no matter where in the world I am, what time it is. And so people say I'm difficult to get a hold of, I say no. Melvin can, Melvin can hold me, ask him how to do it. Okay. So again, just thank you for all being here, and I really look forward to the end of this part so we can all socialize and drink. Okay? So, I, I promise Anissa is going to ask him a question. Um, but I was not going to tell him at the meeting we had earlier, so I cash him. Uh, my question is to you, you know, looking around here, you have so many young people looking up to you. And our leader at Merck. No, it's true. We, we don't have that many. We know that. Um, so, what is your advice to them um, in, in order to you know feel safe and and look up to be somewhere better where they are today? God, oh God! I feel like this America, you're really asking that question. World peace, and then how? Smile and wave. Uh, I mean, you know, I think it, it's it's a hard question to answer because everybody's circumstances are different. Um, I've had the luxury of the opportunity to be able to be authentically me, 100% um, at work. And I say I had the luxury of the opportunity is because, you know, I say, you know what? Um, 
if my boss doesn't like it and he fires me, fuck him, I'm gonna go someplace else. Um, you know, I, I, I go look go with my parents if I have to, you know, when I was when I was younger or whatever, right? Or now I say a couple times I can do that, or whatever it is, right? Or whatever my circumstances I have. My health is in a place where I can say, I screw it, I'll, I'll eat, you know, McDonald's for the next month because that's all I can afford until I get a new job. So for me, the transformative thing has been to just be able to be 100% me authentically, who I am, how I am, both in terms of being gay, but also in terms of, um, you know, the way I express myself, the way I act, the way, what I talk about, what my interests are. So if I could, the one thing I would say is, be as authentically you as you can, um, as you're comfortable with, as you feel is, is safe for you. And to push that boundary, because I suspect you probably might be holding yourself back a little bit, but try to just push that. Um, again, but I don't want to be judgmental in any way, because one of the things over my years, um, I've become much less judgmental over the years as I've grown wise and gray. Um, which is that certain things are different, and the decisions are, that we make are unique to every one of us, and certain things are, and I respect that. But that's what I have to say, is be authentic, be you, and bring yourself, bring your partner, bring your children, bring your, your coming out, bring whatever it is to you, to, to, that's important to you in the world. So, thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, Dionysius. Um, I catch you, huh? So, I really wanted people to see um, a very genuine answer from Dionysus about uh, the question that was going to be posed to him. So, um, if you, I just want to just quickly say, if you see here, we have, uh, thank you to Mike, displaying a lot of the uh, other equal event. That the, we went to this Minneapolis this year, um, around 14 of us participated, and you can see how much fun we have. This particular one is in gay bingo in Philly. Um, so, you can ask anybody in the group what is it, and, and they will tell you. Uh, but if you can tell, no, I, I wish I'm, I looked that good. I can be that one. No. Um, I can wear high heels too. No problem with that. Um, we have some branded. Uh, <laughs> we have some branded MRA uh, material here. You can take with you. Our pin is here. Pens, things like that. You can take back to the office. We just want to bring it so you have access to it from here. Um, so now that you heard Dionysius saying that he will be ending in January, uh, we're honored to have here also the person who's already replacing him, that um, it's just another incredible person that a couple hours we're talking here. And, and you have to hear the conversation, how connected they were talking about the same language. So we know it's going to be a continuity to what Dionysius was doing. So with that more said, Elliot Barr is here. I really don't think I could actually fill the shoes of Daddy's just because you know, just listening to him is just is just a treat and uh, an education in itself. Uh, so I wanted to uh, thank everyone uh, for coming first of all, and also uh, thank Dottie and others for, uh, for the opportunity to do uh, something that's really very important to to Merck and to me personally. Uh, I came to work in 1995 and have been out uh, from the beginning and found uh, a great work environment here. Uh, nothing's perfect and we look forward to uh, working uh, to improve how Merck sees the LGBT community, both particularly as customers uh, but also as employees. And uh, I'm sure with the, uh, I'll, I'll try to do my best to fill the footsteps of, uh, fill the shoes I should say, of Dionysus and uh, and certainly with Melvin's help as well. Uh, and my hope is that uh, we'll be able to succeed as much as uh, the, the team has succeeded so far. So thanks so much. Thank you. Um, I, so I gotta say something oh, here. Well, I, I think that oh, 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 Eliab has been Eliab is being way way too modest, um, and because we have different styles, and, and I think we have you know, taken different directions in terms of our professional career. But after hearing what he's done at Merck since '95 for the LGBT community within the structure of MRL in terms of medicine, in terms of improving LGBT lives, in terms of getting medicines that would not have ever made it into a research program at Merck and getting a leadership that was, um, let's put it positively, 
sclerotic um, to actually make the kind of decisions they made for the kinds of issues that um, the LGBT community, health issues that LGBT communities uh, face that were being underserved, and has been transformative and it has saved lives. So I just want to make sure that people appreciate what Eliab has done. Yeah, very true. So um, another guest that I would like to introduce as well is, um, he doesn't know this, but Mike Ian. <laughs> I want you to come over, Mike. Um, he doesn't like to talk too much, but um, believe it or not, this guy here has been with us for a very, very long time. You sound like I'm almost dead. No. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Uh, you didn't ask me a question or anything. Oh, so no, just, I can I, so I finish and I will come with it. I, I, I just want to say that, that uh, you know, the ability to be yourself at work is really hard. Um, for, for anyone, but particularly for the LGBT community, and I'm really proud to be a silent sponsor, not part of the official structure of Merck, <laughs> but, but to be a silent sponsor and to help in any way, because I think it's so critical um, that we all feel, you know, we all spend so much time at work, we got to be ourselves when we're there, otherwise, what the hell's the point, right? So, anyway, Thank you. thanks. Thank you, Mark. I didn't mention that at all, Mike. It's just a matter of like people know that you've been with us even before we merged as a clean supporter and sponsor, and I think it's that for a long time. Um, another person I want to recognize is the team here, Diversity Inclusion, but Dari Brienza, our Chief Diversity Officer, is with us tonight. Ooh. We invited her last year. She couldn't be here, but she's here tonight. Thank you. Sorry, last year I didn't but um, I made it a point to be here tonight, so thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. And um, I know that there's a change in leadership, but I also want you to know that there really is a lot of ally support for you at Merck. It may sometimes be quiet ally support. So the advice that Dionysius gave you to come to work and be genuine, as genuine you can, as you can be, I would encourage that. My door is always open, and so is everybody in our department's door open. So if you feel unsafe about that, or if you have questions about that, come and reach out to us, because we can connect you to people who will be supportive. Um, there is, I think, quite um, quite a lot of people, probably more than you know. Um, Merck is a little bit of a quiet place. We don't talk a lot about things, a lot of topics, including LGBT. So um, I think sometimes it feels like there may be less support than there is. There really is support. And yet I recognize also that there are some of you in the room who may be working for departments or maybe working for individual leaders who are not very vocal in their support, and that can be really, really hard. So if you need advice, um, come and talk to one of us, because we can help you through some of that, because uh, there's a lot of us who, re who really want um, work to be the kind of place where everybody feels that they can show up and be their best. You can't perform if you can't be who you are, right? So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want everybody to know who they are. Uh, Daniela Che is our liaison. Daniela is right here. David Gonzalez, great advisor to us as well. Please remember those two names because whatever we need, you know, I know we can go to Dottie, but since you're very busy, but these two, we can really count on them. <laughs> very good point, Marcus. <laughs> very good point, Marcus. Thank you. Um, so now we're gonna um, we're gonna call um, we're gonna call my team now. The team who in 2013 uh, helped to put a lot of things together at Merck. Um, we we were trying hard, very hard to connect the business to to a benefit to LGBT who can bring to the to the table. Um, but we realized our our place it was different. We still were fighting for some rights. <laughs> But we made it New Jersey. Chari, Chari, come here. <laughs> but um, I need somebody with me. Um, um, it's just incredible. But <laughs> no, it gets emotional. It's, it's very hard. Um, I gave it to you, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so on that note, I want to say thank you to all of you for coming tonight and, 
and uh, I say a few personal thanks to to some of you who Melvin has always said a, already said a few words to uh, Mike Thien, our fairy godfather. Uh, he, <laughs> you're welcome. It's his unofficial title, and he wears it with pride. Uh, you know, he's he, it, for an ally. He is as close to getting it and walking in our shoes as there is out there, and. He supports us every year and makes our attendance at out and equal possible every year, so I can't say thank you enough. Uh, so thank you. Uh, to Daniela and David for your day-to-day -day support. That's really critical. Ilya, I, I look forward, wherever you are, uh, there you are, thank you. I look forward to working with you. Um, Donnie's one of those folks that, you know, like she said, quiet support, but when we go to her with things like, hey, can we join the coalition for support of uh, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, you know, she's there for us, or any of those other types of kind of things where we've got to navigate the political water, she's there. And Dionysius, thank you so much for your leadership for the last few years. You've inspired me. I'm going to come out of my shell now. <laughs> oh boy. I know, that scares you, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it should. All right. right. That's my brother here, you see? I <laughs> changed completely. Yeah. All right. Well, and of course, Melvin, it's a pleasure to work with you, and I look forward to continuing to work with you. So uh, a lot of us have, uh, are, are potentially going to have change of roles with, within our group next year, but, um, you know, we'll still be around here working with all of you to try and continue to make Merck an even better place for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender employees. So with that, I'd like to start off uh, some of our awards for the evening. And... Uh, the first one we're going to start off with is the Community Outstanding Contributor. And I typically like to kind of lead up to this and make it a surprise, but this one's going to come out right away. So um, these two individuals collaborated on a key initiative um, to raise money to contribute to the Fenway Community Health Center up in Boston. And they worked with the annual fundraiser, and Fenway is really um, a large, innovative, LGBT organization that caters to the medical needs for a very good part of Boston and also includes a medical research center. So a mandate of Merck's presence in Boston is to leverage our location to engage the local research and medical communities. And during the time when little funding was available, Kylan and Tom uh, composed a proposal and approached Tom's organization, the Chief Medical Office, and were granted uh, $5,000 towards Fenway's biggest annual fundraiser which enabled a group of Merck's MRA members and partners and spouses to attend the event in March. And at a recent Contributors Day, Merck was recognized. This could have been, this would have been possible only with the, the work that they did and the strong collaboration and the perseverance and determination of these two team members. So with that, I'd like to recognize Kyle Pierce and uh, Tom Sang. is going to go to our most prominent new contributor and this is a so this is a fun award and, and uh, I can look back and say I think I got this one back in in 1850 <laughs> it was back when I was new to Merck so um, hopefully uh, you know you can see that it's just the very start of something but this person has just brought an incredible new energy to Merck Rainbow Alliance and uh, she's been instrumental in furthering our efforts to bridge the gap with the field, which has been a challenge for us for years and years and years. Thanks to her work, MRA was one of the first ERGs to have a place on the new concourse, which is kind of a virtual um, kind of company site where you've got presence for a few of the ERGs, which with MRA in a very prominent place. And that's a virtual environment where the field can get access to things that, that they otherwise would only have access to if they were in headquarters. Uh, she was the first time attending it out in equal last month and was so energized by it, it was just obvious, it was palpable, you could see what she was going to do in the future. Um, so some other comments, you can see how she's becoming more comfortable in her co-chair position for virtual chapters. So we do have a virtual chapter for those who are not associated with a, a specific locations chapter. 
So she is the lead of the virtual chapter, and with her driving passion, I'm convinced she's going to build an amazing virtual chapter. So she represented out in equal, uh, or at out in equal, she represented the field, and she's been working with her sales leadership, presenting to them on uh, what Merck Rainbow Alliance is and kind of what the other employee resource groups are so that some of the folks in the field can get a little bit more uh, experience with that and kind of some exposure so that they can get to some of the resources that they didn't know existed otherwise. So with that, um, I'd also like to mention one other award or honor that the Tracy works with HRC out in Kansas City where she's based and uh, she has been selected to attend a women's leadership conference in Washington DC. Um, so we are going to be uh, represented there and I know she'll do more. Very proud. So with that I'd like to recognize Tracy White. As our here um, if you want to know how to really connect the business and obtain funding to support your events um, please reach out to Boston they're very very good at that <laughs> every year they do something like that and it's incredible the impact that they have um, so the next award is actually for a chapter award and the chapter award we give it out to a chapter who is very very active or who created something that makes a difference and this chapter um, we we saw that they never stopped doing things, even though we know the engagement wasn't there, but they never stopped, we never let them down. So the chapter award for this year uh, is gonna go to the New Jersey chapter. tonight is um, in recognition for um, creativity award and we we given out the award for people who are doing something very unique and very creative to benefit and help the LGBT community um, in, in this particular award, um, this person um, really really make a difference always didn't stop doing things and you know connected with Air award eight day events um, was really one of the main triggers about doing um, having a conversation about benefits and having a presentation about med benefit at Merck. And it really um, started as a chapter presentation. All of a sudden, it turned out to be that it's a global thing. It's something to be shown and shared with everybody. So we want to recognize a creative um, activity award to Rachel Feller. We have heard about the award, about allies, how important they are in our life and how much really they can speak louder than us. Um, this year we, we gave the award to Karen Ambrose. Karen Ambrose is being incredible 
trying to bring safe space program training everywhere. Um, geez, when Reese is not available, Karen was always there to do the presentation face to face to all the management. So um, we're going to give the award to Karen because it's so unique about her, about what she believes on. So congratulations to Karen. Thank you very much, buddy. Um, so towards the end of, of, of now that we are over 2013, now we're looking forward to 2014, um, Cherry spoke a little bit about the new team that we're going to put together, um, you know, with Elliot already as, as our leader. Um, I would like to call Cherry back here again and Gerhard here again. Um, we are going to be uh, all, Elliot, why you don't come in again? Um, this will be your team for next year. Um, it's just the passion that we feel about helping and maintaining ourselves uh, together. Um, my role, I will still be active. Um, I will be become the corporate responsibility liaison, maybe task force person uh, helping you because I think our external interests are, are so, so important to us and our corporate responsibility. Sherry will be leading the talent and inclusion uh, at, yeah. Talent inclusion talent task force. Um, Sue Wise will no longer be part of the role. She just been swamped with work, so Cherry will take that part. And believe it or not, when we start two years ago, Cherry wanted to have that role, and we like asked her like, take corporate responsibility. That's going to be a challenge. And she did it very well. Now she's want to go back to talent inclusion, and we want to welcome Cherry and that. And with that said. Want to say something? No? Okay. With that said, um, the new member of the team is uh, Gerhard. And uh, Gerhard, um, he, he was the chapter lead in Europe, and with along with uh, Roberto, who's not here, he was, he's in the U.S., he was in his way, but couldn't drive. Um, he's not used to the whole cold weather, ice stuff. Um, and he said that, um, you know, him and between him, but both of them actually were very active in Europe. So Gerhard was moved to the U.S. and I saw the opportunity to have me engage into the business inside. So Gerhard, just how you look, how you see the future with us? First of all, I would like to say thank you for actually getting this opportunity and um, especially for somebody who's been just relocating to the United States and getting the roller coaster of emotions with the DOMA announcement where I was a prime beneficiary, but literally we have been waiting to get our visa for my husband. This was just exciting and to see that from a different perspective, I really would like to congratulate everybody because I know the small things in life which everybody of you is doing every day is going to move also the United States where it's supposed to be. Regarding the vision where we are going to bring business insight, I would like to bring the knowledge which I've obtained, obtaining currently in customer centricity to this group, which means how can the LGBT community really make a different on Merck's business, can provide value, but actually how can we as a corporation actually really target those who mean most of us. Merck has got more than 100,000 customers, but there's a few which really matter, and I see this as my mission, that I make sure that the LGBT community as one of the customer group is going to matter in the future. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm still at the beginning of my tenure, so I'm kind of minus two weeks before I really have to start, but uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. So, thank you very much, Gerhard. Um, I heard Gerhard some time ago, um, and as soon as we have the need of business insight, I just thought about him right away. And it just worked out when he moved here that it just makes it so easier for us. So it's a great, great addition to the team now. Um, if you see we're four, we're missing one. So we're still looking for somebody who can take my role as the leader of the group. So if you know somebody, please let me know, Dottie, Daniela, or George, or Leah. Um, because we really need, we really need somebody um, who can who can take the lead and, and be out and be proud and help us to really make the connection that we have to do with the business, our talent, and the corporate responsibility. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Someone please find another lesbian. I'm just like. <laughs> Personally, I, I, I drive a Jeep. <laughs>
<laughs> I've already got a great partner, I just need somebody else on the team to kind of shift the balance of power. <laughs> but we have both teams, so it should be fine. I'm Very good. I'm going to shift the balance of power. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. So, so thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Um, so finally, um, sorry. Um, the authorities call you out. Um, and finally, this is um, again the final award. I think it's the most significant award for us of the night. Um, I want to say the word significant is, is the meaning is different uh, for us. So. Um, this award is, is going to be for um, a Visionary Excellence Award that we have. Um, it, is, it is the vision of this person who created the space we're in today. Um, he wasn't here, but all the way from China, he was present uh, for us. When we needed Dionysius, he was there. I'm emotional today. <laughs> I just want Spanish to so opera, that's why. Um, <laughs> Jewish know what they are. Um, so, so really, he was in China, but he came here, his presence was very, very big, very impactful to us. Um, for being out to be a leader, being out in a company, and being recognized, so many leaders at the executive level, I think it's incredible. So, Dionysius, do you want to come over? <laughs> This is Visionary Excellence Award. We just want this to take you with you, whatever you go, and think about us. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it actually matches most of my eyes. <laughs> um, uh, this is very unexpected, and... Uh, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> you can still keep talking. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Um, this is uh, definitely unexpected, and it's an incredible um, honor. Uh, I was talking with Dottie a little bit earlier, and, and I was explaining to her that you know, over my life, especially earlier in my career, and when I was in college and business school, I was very, very active in the community, doing a lot of things, learning, and, and trying to contribute, and trying to, to you know, learn. And then, you know, professional career took me out of the country, and you know, took me to pathways, and you know, got, you know, involved with other things. And the opportunity that, um, you know, the diversity and the inclusion organization provided to me a couple of years ago when they asked me to, to take on this role. And let's just be really honest, and Eliab, this is no comment on us, but there wasn't a lot of big pool to choose from. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, but I think that um, it was an incredibly, it was very, very significant for me to be asked to, to do this because, uh, first of all, it gave me an opportunity to learn again and to learn about the issues that are, are, are re um, relevant today, to meet an enormous number of people that I would not met otherwise, to begin to think about things that I hadn't thought about for a long time, and to see the enormous progress that has been made from when I was you know, a young analyst in you know, a summer internship at Merck um, to today. Um, a lot to do, but a lot has been done already. So the two years have really been um, absolutely incredible and fruitful for me personally and professionally and intellectually. Um, and so I really wanted to thank everyone for, for being part of that opportunity. I have to thank Melvin um, because Melvin has truly been the rock, the organizer, the doer, the executor. I mean, he has never shied away from anything. Um, and I just wish I had more time to devote, and I wish I had more opportunity to be in the United States and to be able to uh, see and participate. Um, but I am glad that we were able to uh, work together so well and be so much in sync. And we all, whenever we met, we had such a good time because we were so in sync, and we saw through the bullshit, and we laughed about it, and you know, we made all of the opportunities to add value to the organization, to our community, we made them fun. And um, so it was never a burden, and it was never something that I felt that was additional, additional responsibility. It was really about doing something meaningful with people I like, and, um, and contributing in a way that um, I felt I could, and 
uh, that I felt would have maybe add a little bit of value to her. So, thank you. Uh, Woo! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We, we was, it was unanimous when we talked about it, like, perfect, perfect. We, we tried to find the name, it just, it just was like, so perfect for you. Please, please, enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you. Bye.